Hi guys, my name is Faith and I'm a clinical pharmacist living and working in the UK. So I make pharmacist related content and I also sometimes make hair videos. So if you are happy to see content like that, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video to my new subscribers. Hi, how are you? And to my returning subscribers, I'm so happy to see you back. So without further rambling today, I'm just here to speak on what you must do and know to be a successful locum pharmacist. So I'm well aware there's been quite a few people who are newly qualified, congratulations. And there's been probably a few people who have just left their jobs and are venturing into locuming as maybe a short term plan or just to see where things take them. So these are things that you must do, must, must, must do to be a successful locum. So you stay with me and I will just tell you everything. And this list, I believe, might be non-exhaustive. So if you feel like there's anything I've missed, please feel free to share it in the comment section below. We'll be happy to engage with you down there and have conversation. So let's get straight into this video. The first thing I would like you to know is that you must sort out all your fees on time. So the first fee, which is probably the most obvious one, is your GPHC annual registration fee. Your annual registration fee will be due at the same time every year. So stay on top of that, you will get reminders and you need to make sure you make sure you pay it because if you're not, then you'll be kicked off the register. The second thing you need to do is ensure that your insurance is top notch ensure that you have paid your insurance to keep you as a lo locum so as an independent worker as someone who works on their own your insurance will cover you in terms of if there's any problems at work there are a few places i can recommend for insurance i personally use npa which is the national pharmacy association you can also use pda as well which is a pharmacy defense association and um yeah there's lots of other places so shop around and find what insurance suits you best the next thing is your dbs so you need to make sure you've got a disclosure barring service sorted so make sure you get that done nowadays lots of places are asking for people to join the dbs update service which is a service that renews itself and you just need to pay a subscription fee so your gphc annual registration fees your insurance and your dbs check so the next thing is training so you need to ensure that all of your statutory and mandatory training are up to par all of your statutory and mandatory training are up to scratch and you need to ensure that you find what statutory and mandatory training apply to where you will be working what areas you're going to be working at or what additional trainings you might need to do to bring more value to the communities that you'll be serving which might also in turn bring you a little bit more money so for example i'm talking about things like safeguarding safeguarding vulnerable children and adults level two is the minimum i know is required to be a community pharmacist the other one is zero suicide alliance we're talking about nms we're talking about repeat dispensing and by nms i mean new medicine service we're talking about repeat dispensing we're talking about the mental capacity act we're talking about being a dementia friend these are all statutory and mandatory trainings that you need to make sure you have completed. And there's probably some I haven't listed. So do your research and make sure you have all the information. You need to ensure you have sorted out your smart card. So all NHS staff, including community pharmacists, have smart cards that help them to access information about patients and this is very very crucial especially if you're going to be working on weekends because you will be working with multiple teams you need to ensure you have your own smart card on you that as a professional as a pharmacist you are able to access information when you need to and they've got pharmacists on the premises they want to know that they can access information and your smart card is the key to that so speak to a coordinator in any pharmacy that you know and they might be able to direct you to the right place to get your smart cards you might have already sorted out during your pre-reg but when you're sorting out your smart card make sure you do the locum registration which allows you to access information at multiple pharmacies at the same time so the locum re registration is important when you get in touch with the smart card authorities you need to let them know that you will be a locum so they give you access to multiple pharmacies otherwise your smart card will be locked to one pharmacy and you would struggle as a locum if you're going to multiple places so the next thing you need to negotiate you need to negotiate your rates so if you come in contact with a coordinator a lot of the time there's wiggle room in that 
um, fee that they want to pay you and you need to negotiate just make sure you don't downplay yourself or just jump at the offer that looks juicy to you ask them where the wiggle room is and if there is then you ask for what you can um or you ask for better rates and then in most cases you'll be successful and if you find that you're not successful you can always like figure out what what a fine sweet um middle midpoint or middle spot is for you and the negotiator so always remember to negotiate your rates if you find the rates absolutely extremely smashing there might be no point to negotiate them so yeah figure out what rates are great and go for them the next thing is you need to keep records you need to keep records so i need to remind you that you will be self-employed as a locum as a locum you are self-employed so you need to keep all your records so you need to keep all your mileage records you need to keep all your records of where you've worked and how much they should be paying you are you working lunch breaks are you getting paid extra for xyz if you do flu jabs do you need to get paid extra keep all your records i cannot stress this enough because one it will help you when you're chasing up payments because sometimes these payments can be late and you need to ensure that you're keeping on top of getting your payments back two it will help you when it comes to filing your taxes because you need to make sure you file your taxes as a locum pharmacist um get record good record keeping is always a winner mileage so if you are negotiating your rates you need to ensure that you ask if they will be willing to pay for mileage especially if you'll be driving long hours because sometimes people can drive up to two hours for a day shift and if you're being paid the mileage for it, it might be worth it for you depends on who you are and what you're willing to do which brings me to my next point know how far you are willing to stretch so know how far you're willing to go in terms of distance know how far you're willing to go in terms of workload so some pharmacies may want to work you so hard and once you get there and you realize that's it you might decide Decide that you don't want to go back to that pharmacy or some pharmacies are just perfect for you and you want to book multiple shifts with them because you know you get used to the team and you enjoy working there the pace is good for you so understand your own capacity and don't push yourself too hard this is a good thing about being a locum you are flexible you don't have to be in a place you don't like for longer than one day so you can just go and never return so know what your limits are another limit is are you going to always take your lunch breaks do you want to work through your lunch breaks some people work through their lunch breaks and get paid for it some people take their lunch breaks and they cannot compromise on that so know your limits book shifts via a rota coordinator or a reputable system so I currently use Locator Locum and I'm sure millions of pharmacists across nation use Locator Locum as well. It's very repeatable and you can negotiate on there and you, they've got really good people managing the app or the website. So Locator Locum is a really good one. So if you're getting new, if you're getting started with Locum in, Locator Locum is a good place to start. It might take a while for you to get your, your account all set up. But once you're all set up, Locator Locum is good. But once you get in touch with those rotor coordinators, it might be worth keeping their numbers because sometimes you get better rates from speaking to them directly. Or sometimes you can just get good shifts or you can get a stretch of shifts with them if you like a particular branch of their store and you would like to go back there repeatedly. One last little tip is there's some stores that are open for longer days. So if you pick long, long days, which is a no-brainer anyways, pick long days, work for longer hours, make more money, and then you don't have to work for money days in the week, and then you can maximize your time. Yes, so you can do that as a locum pharmacist. And last but not the least, and which is the most and most, most, most important. Well, all the other tips are important, but this one's really important so you don't get in trouble. Make sure you pay your taxes on time. So the tax year runs from April to March. So April 2021 to March 2022, you need to make sure that you've sorted out all your taxes before that time and you pay on time. Make sure you pay so you don't run into debt. You are self-employed. If you feel like you can't handle it yourself, hire an accountant for a fee that will sort out all your taxes for you. And as a locum, the good thing is that you can claim back a lot of expenses and you don't need to pay as much taxes as say if you are working with a company. So I hope these tips were useful. I hope this is going to help someone who wants to go into the world of locuming. All the best out there. Just remember, the world is your oyster. You can do so much, you can do so much, but make sure you pace yourself, know your boundaries, know your limits, know what you can do, and make sure you do all the things that are important so you don't get yourself in trouble. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel, and I will catch you in my next video.